Hi again students, let's continue with the next subtopic which is spermatogenesis. Spermatogenesis is a process of the origin and development of the sperm cells within the male reproductive organ, testis. The testes are composed of numerous thin and tightly coiled tubules known as the seminiferous tubules. The sperm cells are produced within the walls of these tubules. Okay, before we go any further on the process of spermatogenesis, Let's take a look on the hormonal mechanism in male that stimulates the process of producing sperms. Human male does not produce sperm until he reaches sexual maturity or puberty. As the male reaches at about 10 years old, his hypothalamus starts to secrete gonadotrophin releasing hormone or known in short as GnRH. GnRH, when released, will trigger the release of another two hormones, which are follicle stimulating hormone, FSH, and the luteinizing hormone, LH. Now, there are two things that will happen with the secretion of FSH and LH. First, FSH will stimulate the Sertoli cells, which is the cells in the wall of the seminiferous tubules, to secrete androgen binding protein. This protein will stimulate spermatogenesis. On the other hand, release LH will stimulate the interstitial cells, also a type of cells that lie between the seminiferous tubules to secrete testosterone. So, in short, FSH and LH, which are released by the anterior pituitary gland, will trigger the testes to secrete ABP, the androgen binding protein, and testosterone. Testosterone is the principal male sex hormone produced by the human body. Testosterone affects a man's appearance and sexual development. A high concentration is needed in order to stimulate sperm production as well as a main sex drive. Alright, let's look further on the process of spermatogenesis. Always remember these phases only started when a human male reached his sexual maturity as it requires high concentration of testosterone. There are four phases in the spermatogenesis. The first one is multiplication. In this phase, Basal germinal epithelium cells, which are in the seminiferous tubules, undergo repeated mitosis and producing many diploid spermatogonia. Under this phase, the diploid spermatogonia will further grow into larger cells with more cytoplasm. At this stage, it is called primary spermatocytes. So, under phase 1, multiplication, the germinal epithelium cells at the wall of seminiferous tubule starts to divide mitotically. This produces spermatogonia. Next, Spermatogonia grow larger and now call primary spermatocyte. After that, the primary spermatocytes enter phase 2, maturation. In this phase, 
Meiosis takes place. Primary spermatocytes undergo meiosis 1, producing secondary spermatocyte, and then meiosis 2 to produce spermatids. At this point, spermatids are in a haploid form, and thus it is the beginning of gametes or sex cell. Okay, so here's a clearer view to illustrate the meiosis 1 and 2 from primary spermatocytes to finally the haploid spermatid. Let's look at another view and this time at the wall of the seminiferous tubules. So phase 2 maturation is when the primary spermatocyte undergo meiosis 1 and 2 and producing spermatid. Moving on to phase 3 transformation. There is no more cell proliferation or division at this stage. In transformation, spermatids are transformed to spermatozoa. This is through a differentiation process, which is as the Sertoli cells in the walls of the seminiferous tubules support and nourish the immature cells by giving them nutrients and blood products. Spermatozoa is a transformed cell with more cytoplasm, oval head, and long tail. Spermatozoa will now detach from the Sertoli cells in the wall and released into the fluid-filled lumen of the tubules. It can swim freely in the lumen now and call sperm. So, you can see here, after maturation, the spermatid is transformed to become spermatozoa through differentiation. And then, it detached from the wall and now called as sperm. Last phase is capacitation. Sperms that are detached from the wall of the tubules need to ripen for some days. They will need to go through capacitation as they transit in the epididymis. So remember one of the functions of epididymis is to bring sperms into maturity. In the epididymis, Inhibitors that sticks on the sperm surface are removed. Sperms are ready once the capacitation is done. However, the final maturation is completed once the sperm is in the female reproductive tract. You will learn about this part in the next topic, human fetal development. So, that's it. The four phases of spermatogenesis. Just a quick view on how does a mature sperm looks like. There are three major parts of a mature sperm, which are head, midpiece, and tail. Head contains all important DNA. It consists of acrosome, the covering head, and also nucleus. Midpiece is choked with mitochondria as a source of energy for swimming. And the last one, tail, also known as flagellum. This is the part which aids the sperm to swim with the whip-like movement. Abnormal sperms may affect the male fertility and cause difficulties in having babies. There are some of the common infertilities in men. Azuspermia is when there is absence of sperm 
and oligospermia is when there are only little sperms produced. Sperms may also not be moving normally, and in this case, this is known as asthenospermia. If the issues are in the sperm morphology, then it is termed as terastopermia. Okay, we are done for spermatogenesis. Let's continue to part C. Thank you.